Thank you. So welcome all. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Kevin Patterson. I'm actually a uh, solutions engineer here at Atlassian. I've got about uh, 20 years of IT service management experience uh, with the focus over the last 10 years being on asset and configuration management. So looking forward to working with Hakan today and talking to you guys about getting started with asset and configuration management. Hakan. Hello, my name is Hakan Bader. I'm a solutions engineer in Efficode Sweden. Uh, and uh, before joining Efficode, I was in Atlassian and I was a part of, I was lucky to be um, working very closely with the geosource management and insight development teams. In the, in the last three years, I've been talking about asset and configuration management with more than um, 200 different customers in all uh, maturity levels. Yep. Yeah. So the purpose of today's session is about helping you on your journey to building up a powerful JSM implementation um, and really addressing your asset and configuration management needs based on the functionality and insight. Uh, we'll also provide a structured approach for designing, building uh, a data model, leveraging integration capabilities and automations. Today, we, we will not talk about the features or how we, to use insight, but we will talk about more on the planning phase of your project implementation. So if you need to learn the features, there, we will be sharing a lot of resources at the end of the presentation. Uh, so the documentation and the training materials are available, but the decision process before starting the uh, project will be our topic. Thanks. Okay. So with Jira service management, teams can now for the first time really deliver value fast. You can deliver a great service um, experience extremely quickly without the cost and complexity uh, that legacy ITSM solutions kind of slow you down with. Um, it's the biggest thing I find with JSM myself is ex extremely easy to use and deploy. Uh, number two on my list today is I'm going to help you understand how to make your work visible. Um, you know, JSM provides an open collaborative platform uh, that brings greater visibility to work. So your teams have rich contextual information at their fingertips to move fast and make better decisions. Um, you know, thanks to our heritage and development, um, you know, DevOps, um, we can help you understand the need to really invest and in really accelerate the flow of work between development and IT operations with JSW and JSM. So with Jira Service Management, you can seamlessly flow and speed up business requests through the development and operations and back again. So you can go from ideation to operations fast. And finally, unified service, one platform to do development and operations seamlessly and keeping everyone on the same page. So let's do a quick summary of the flow of today's presentation. So we're going to walk you through these three pillars. Uh, first, we're going to talk a little bit about what is asset and configuration management. We'll discuss how it's structured and some good, uh, good practices around those areas. Uh, we'll then go into how do I get started? Um, I'm guessing with so many of you here, you've all got some more questions on, hey, how do we get moving fast? Maybe you've played with Insight. Maybe you've got it in, in, in uh, production. So you're going to learn a lot of good practices today about you know, how do you get started and how do you keep improving over time. And after today is over, we're going to talk about where do I go next? You, you spent some great time over the last few days here with us here at Atlassian and our partners, but how do you keep this going and keep improving your GSM solution over time? So we've got a great agenda pack for you guys today. All right. So Insight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is Insight? Uh, almost a year ago, JSM uh, launched a new feature called Insight to address the asset and configuration management capability. So Insight is actually a database for anything. It, you can store the hardware set information, software set information, and organizational data structures. And the relationship between all these data sets, I think the most powerful a feature of Insight is having this relational data capability. So the purpose of asset and configuration uh, practice is to plan and manage the full life cycle of your assets to help your organization maximize value, control costs, 
manage risks, support decision making about the, the, the purchase, the reuse, the retirement uh, of assets, uh, and also to meet regulatory and contractual requirements. For this purpose, Insight provides data modeling capability in the center of JSM. Insight stores all data needed, such as hardware, software details, people-related information. Uh, this helps JSM leverage the fundamental features of the Jira platform, like automation and, and customization, through with data stored in Insight. So asset and configuration management practices support all ITSM practices at your organization today. They add value by increasing the visibility of what is being managed. For, exa for example, what laptops are in stock? Uh, which are in use? What needs maintenance? Uh, it improves planning, uh, pardon me, it includes pl planning and speeds work to be done. So knowing which servers need patching and which assets need updating. It is possible to decrease the ticket resolution duration by saving from misrouting tickets to the wrong people. Uh, nothing's worse than sending a hardware request over to your applications team. It slows work down, and it gets eye rolls from the application support team. So organizations can also save in licensing costs by knowing the current usage and available licenses. So knowing how many to buy, not over-purchasing, Insight's great for that functionality. Also, having a, a, a dependency mapping capability where you can map your systems and subsystems seamlessly in the Insight application. So a lot of great functionality there. Also, too, uh, decreasing or optimizing new hardware purchases, purchasing is also possible by tracking existing assets better. Automating repetitive asset management tasks would save manual human work so that they can focus on the important stuff. Next. So we got a quick demo clip I wanted to show you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and kick it off now. So here's an example of a JSM form, a request form leveraging insight intelligence through insight. Here we see Kevin Patterson has an issue with a laptop. When he's pointing at his, uh, his screen here, we can actually see the laptop assigned to Kevin. So I'm getting this information from insight. So it's not a free text field. We're pulling in this asset details right into our forms. When the agent sees this, they're not hunting around for what I have when I'm putting the request through. The agent can easily see that, as well as the um, attributes I want them to see front and center on the screen. Notice on the right there, that add object. All last seen fields, custom fields, can actually look into Insight and populate these forms. It really takes your forms to the next level, collecting information, giving agents that contextual experience right at their fingertips here. Click on. So next up, we want to talk to you about how do you get started. We talked about what we're trying to get to. We showed a little quick demonstration there. I want to talk to you next about how you get started. And for that, Haka, let's go ahead and kick it off. Yeah. There are many ways to start the project. <laughs> But I would like to focus on the three important steps um, before you start. The, our recommendation is, as a first step, define the value that you want to create and define your expectations. It's about understanding the use cases, roles of the people, and their dreams. The second step is about finding the relevant data sources and modeling the data structure according to its purpose and usage. As a third step, you can define the areas which you can automate, design the integrations and data syn synchronization methods. Let me elaborate these steps with some tips and examples. While defining the value, include as many teams as possible and identify the stake, uh, correct stakeholders. Collect the high-level descriptions of the desired end state from these stakeholders Sometimes one topic may be in the interest of multiple teams, and it's important to be able to look from different angles to, the, to see the full picture. You will need this solid reasoning for each use case and decide on including it in the scope or not. Don't ask and don't hesitate asking the why questions to the colleagues, to your stakeholders. It's not that because you're a bad person, but you need to clarify why why are we doing this? Why do they need this? And defining the data access rights at this stage saves time by eliminating the back and forth steps during the project. Who is the owner of the data? Who is the user of the data? Who can see the data? Who shouldn't see the data? And who is going to edit the data? 
These are just a couple of examples, example questions to be clarified at this point. You can use a Jira project, a Confluence page, to handle this process. Um, Jira software project or product discovery could be a nice solution for that. Just a side note, product discovery is a new Atlassian product. It's in the uh, beta phase. It's free. You can have a look at that. It is um, designed for the planning phase of the development cycle. So it has nice user interface. Now it's time to find the related data to, uh, for these use cases in the organization. Every day we see a new software or a system um, joining the uh, IT landscape. Yesterday in his speech, Joff from uh, the Atlassian Chief Product Officer mentioned that there are average, in average, there are more than 180 applications um, in an enterprise uh, organization. Today, uh, Atlassian IT shared with us in their speech that they have more than 600 SaaS applications. So the number of systems used in an organization is increasing, and it's not the only challenge. Sadly, even though the data is there, uh, finding the correct system and then finding the um, correct person may be hard because people work in silos, they work in their domains, and most of these systems are disconnected. In summary, it is not simple, but with the help of insight, it's definitely possible. I will give an example on, um, of a use case. So one of the requirements from the stakeholders may be as follows. As a change manager, I would like to know which business applications will be affected during a resource upgrade in a planned operation to ensure that the risk is minimized and the customers are not impacted. So we have the value definition here. We don't want our customers to be impacted. No downtime, no um, decrease, decrease in performance, and no data loss. Let's analyze the use case from data perspective. Where's the data, related data infrastructure information? You may get an answer that the infrastructure is also hosted on cloud and managed by the site reliability engineering team. Where are the business application definitions? They may be defined in the enterprise architecture management tool, which is managed by the enterprise architects, solution architects, or technical architects. So we have two different systems managed by two different teams. And how are they related? There may be a well-defined resource tagging strategy in place. So now we have collected the user stories. You have identified the uh, source of the data. Now you will decide how you will fulfill the user story. First, analyze the data source. Could you please raise your hand if you're using an AWS or Azure environment? Almost everyone. Uh, be selective. For example, if you're talking about an AWS environment, and if your stakeholder is asking and uh, saying that I want it all, that means 200 plus products. It could take months to implement this kind of integration. On the other hand, uh, AWS config could be an alternative. It focuses to all the configuration items uh, in the environment. It, it doesn't cover everything, but it focuses to 40 plus products. Or maybe AWS SSM, system manager, uh, systems manager inventory uh, uh, feature, could be the best use case for you because it focuses to the four main products, servers, applications, um, network, and the uh, security. So which one you should implement? The answer lies between the lines of the use case. 
you need to find the correct uh, answer to this question because it can change the time from months to weeks or even days. Another common data source is the enterprise architecture tool. They are built to store the logical definitions and the dependencies which are crucial for the organization. These systems have their own data model. And Insight can help you to replicate the same data model as it is. Same definitions, same properties, and same relationships. Having the freedom of data modeling uh, in Insight is really great. And this may be solving another issue in the organization. Um, a, a team, maybe an enterprise architecture team, may be calling a, a, an entity as application, and another team may be calling it business application, and some other person could call it something else. And when they, these people come together, there is a need of translator to understand each other. And if you use the same terminology all around the company, that would save time. Let's assume that you, uh, the data you need exists in AWS Config, and you, have the, um, you use the proper tagging for all resources, and you have the LeanIX data structure ready. Now it's time to connect the dots for unleashing the power of insight. You have the data sets aggregated from different systems. Your data model is designed according to the organization needs, and they are ready for automatic data propagation. Well done. We've just analyzed one use case, and you may have 50 more. You can repeat the same steps to find the best um, data model for the organization, for your project. Now, Insight craves for data as all the other databases. There are multiple ways to, for propagating the data into Insight. Let's review them. I've been talking about the sophisticated systems, data models, but there's one fact that every organization keeps some part of the data in an Excel file or a confidence page, and they are updated manually. So uh, uploading the JSV file into Insight is the most common uh, data migration method uh, that you can see. In addition, Atlassian provides a solution uh, called Insight Discovery, which is free of charge and captures all the configurations in your data center in an automatic way. Another powerful way of populating the data into Insight. With the, sorry. Uh, with the help of a newly introduced import API, it is possible to develop a custom integration to replicate the data from other sources uh, by keeping the source data model. JSM automation also supports webhooks, and they may be handy in some cases. So Insight is not limited with one data model, one service management data model, but it, has, uh, it can support multiple data models at the same time. You don't have to choose one over another one. While building up your structure, there are a couple of decisions you need to make. I wanted to summarize them, uh, just a few of them, in six different dimensions. They are not like one step uh, following the other one, but they are different dimensions that you need to think about and um, decide on them at the same time. So let's start with the stakeholders. Who is going to benefit from your integration? Um, because you may be... Um, you may need different sets of data, and the, you may want to represent the data in different ways to your customers, or your partners, or your employees. So the level of uh, detailed information is depending on the 
uh, person or persona that will benefit from this integration. We talked about the data modeling, data aggregation, and you need to plan also the data normalization and transformation if necessary. Another dimension is security, data access and visibility. You need to make sure that the sensitive data or personal data is handled properly in your design. There are several integration methods that I mentioned in the previous slide. One more addition to this topic is, depending on the source system, data transfer method may be different. Sometimes you can pull the data from the external system, or maybe sometimes the, if this external system has the capability of notification, they could send it to you. So both options should be evaluated in, while you're thinking of the integration. Data replication frequency may be di different depending on the use case. We commonly see that daily updates are covering most of the use cases. On the other hand, there will be cases where real-time data flow is crucial, especially for an operational use case. In an example, uh, an example could be around the service request. You may have a te test team which needs a server to be launched on an AWS environment. And they send you a request, you provision the server, and you want to display the latest status of the server on the ticket. For that kind of a uh, use case, you would need the data to be replicated from AWS, the latest status to be replicated from AWS to Insight. In this case, real-time updates from Insight, uh, AWS is important. And as a last point, your implementation needs to track the data sequence. If you're processing the data in bulk, correct queuing system should be in place so that the old data does not overwrite the latest status. If you decide on processing the updates daily, then you could use the import API, or if you need the real-time data, then each update may arrive into Insight one by one. Now I would like to talk a bit, um, about my, one of my favorite topics, cloud automation. Cloud automation is one of the features that is improving uh, every month. Uh, currently, it's supported by Jira Software, Jira Work Management, and G JSM. And uh, Atlassian recently announced that Confluence is also going to support uh, automation. Since last March, um, I mean the previous year, March, um, uh, Cloud automation has the components related to Insight. So it's possible to execute automations uh, when a record is created in Insight or updated or deleted. You can have a scheduled uh, automation which would query the database and check some conditions. You can have a branch, which means you can query the database, find a set of records, and then process them separately you can create objects, edit, and you can create records, edit records, and search for them. You can edit an issue, uh, assign the record to the issue, or even without uh, changing this, um, doing it in a complex way, you could update the records through the Jira issue. Another example can be on stock management. You may have an organizational policy to keep five laptops on the shelf all the time. So whenever one, someone breaks the laptop, you don't uh, spend time with the procurement cycles, you can just uh, deliver it in a quick way. So this kind of a automation flow, just a couple of steps could uh, help you with that. So whenever a laptop is assigned, the database is, uh, the automation rule runs, checks the number of records um, in the database. Uh, if, it is, if you have less than the threshold that you have set, uh, the less than uh, the threshold laptops, then it could create a new task to the procurement team. So 
So asset journey may be different in every organization. This, is, this commonly requires involvement of multiple teams to work in a collaboration and align their processes for a successful service delivery. Of course, each team would have their own workflows and insight would be the common shared data repository in the middle. Asset information, asset status, owner details are constantly updated by the independent workflows. For example, when a laptop is ordered, received, assigned, someone assigned to someone, broken by someone, or uh, repaired and disposed. So until now, we, we have seen the geosource management portal, we have seen the agent view of geosource management, and we saw the uh, object, uh, the mapping feature of Insight, but we didn't see the Insight uh, interface. So I would like to show you a couple of uh, screens from Insight and give examples on uh, different data sets. Currently, we're looking to a result of an Insight Discovery scan. On the left side, the structure is created by Insight Discovery automatically. And uh, it finds all the servers in the data center and pushes the data in an automatic way. So there is no human interaction needed. Another example is, uh, can be about the laptops we talked about. And on the left top, you can see a catalog where you can use in your service requests. When someone is asking for a new laptop, they could select from the um, laptop catalog, predefined uh, models, approved models. And then when they are in the process, these laptops can, be, can have another record for the life cycle, all having different statuses, and you can see them in a summary. Uh, People-related, organizational-related data structure, data is crucial. Um, here we can organize, we can store the organizations, teams, departments, their roles, and the relationship between all of these. If you look at um, uh, user profile, you will be able to see all the details about the user and also all the assigned assets in one single view. Please have a look at the right bottom corner. There you will see the connected issues for this person. That's a great way to look at the, um, the issues from the asset angle. So if you're interested in solving the tickets, you would of course use your uh, geosource management screens for the uh, issue screens but sometimes it's great to see the number of tickets related to one asset or one person and then handle them in a, in a simple way. So as a summary, um, flexibility is the key. Start with a specific problem. Don't include more the data than you need and keep the goal of accurate enough in mind. You don't need all of it. So having, uh, aiming for a 100% perfect CMDB would take time. It's slow. Ha not having a CMDB is not an option in our century. So accurate enough CMDB should be the goal. Thank you, Akan. And accurate enough is the goal. Uh, don't boil the ocean. We've seen a lot of CMDBs fails over the last decade by people trying to put everything in. So thank you for, for ending on that point. Uh, next, we're going to talk a little bit about where do you go next. So you've, you've heard Akan talk about a great way to get started. Now we're going to talk about continuing that journey. So there's a lot of great resources out there that you can leverage to help in this area. Uh, the next step really is learning more. We've got great resources, guides, white papers, and my favorite, the Elastin community you can use to help educate yourself and your peers on what you can do with Insight. Next, um, something I do all the time is try it out. You get this, uh, if you don't have Insight today, uh, spin it up in, uh, in one of your sandboxes and give it a go. 
Um, you know, you've got the documentation. If you've got the time, spin it up, play with it, with use cases in mind, and uh, give, it, give it a try. I think you'll find it's quite easy to begin. Uh, I, I loved Hakan's AWS example. You don't have to bring everything in, right? Focus on those use cases, and instead of months, you're talking days to get these objects in and to go forward. Uh, and the third here is really engage and you know, connect with Ethicode. Uh, I'll be honest, I work for Atlassian. If I get into a bind myself, I have him on <laughs> Slack. So he's helped me at least a dozen times over the last three months as I've been bringing myself up to speed with Insights capabilities. So shout out to Akana on that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as Ethicode, um, we are providing um, Atlassian services uh, for the full product portfolio. We're providing consultancy, uh, migration services, trainings, and um, we, are, we have some awards uh, from the past years, and we're currently, uh, we established our UK office recently, um, and we, are, we have existence in nine different countries, and we're more than 400 people. And yesterday, we got the award for the services uh, from Atlassian. Thank you. Nice to that. So resources. Uh, probably most of you are going to be flying home, so now is a perfect time to go download some of these great resources to kind of read on the flight home. Uh, there's a great asset and configuration management handbook for ITSM. Great resource for you to take a look at and, uh, and read on the flight home. There's some great uh, team playbooks, uh, lots of things like incident response uh, and uh, roles, responsibilities, good stuff there. Uh, down the list a bit, there are getting started guide with Insight and JSM Cloud. How do you get started? Kind of reinforces the things you've learned today. Some great stuff there. Uh, achieving ITSM uniformity through structured data with Eurobank. So lots of good stuff here to kind of take back and, and read as you're going through and kind of getting started or, or continuing forward on this journey with Insight. So next slide. Uh, lastly, we're going to say a thank you to you all. Thank you for coming.